Hi, I'm Peter Burris of Wikibon. Welcome to another CUBE Conversation. We're going to have a great time talking over the next few minutes about the role that performance in the data plane is going to play at making possible both the options provided by the cloud, but at the same time in a way that allows us to actually run the applications at the speed and the scale that the business requires. And to do that, we've got Mark Fleischman, who's the CEO and founder at Terra, and Guy Churchwold, who's the executive chairman at Terra. Welcome back to theCUBE, guys. Thank you for having us, Peter. So, Mark, I want to start with kind of what mm. I started with, right? That yes. at the end of the day, we've got this enormous agility that we're provided within the cloud yes. stack, but you still have to run on real computers that have real constraints. That's right. And everybody knows that there is no, there is mm. no greater constraint than maintaining uh, the state of data That's right. and moving That's data. Right. That's so right. how does Deterra address those issues? Mm -hmm. So as part of data freedom, obviously, is not only about automation. The promise of software-defined storage is seamless automation, but unfortunately, in many cases, with unimpressive performance. In our case, we've engineered the whole data path down to the physical devices ourselves, and so the levels of performance we can deliver is millions of IOPS across the data center as l at less than 200 microseconds latency. And most importantly, on standard servers over standard protocols. So nothing fancy in, uh, in terms of hardware required. And that's the true promise of software defense storage. Now you mentioned automation. Uh, that kind of performance has got to open up mm -hmm. new classes of automation potential so that the storage or the, the data mm -hmm. resources are that much easier to envision, that much easier to apply, that much easier to exploit by the development community. Tell us a little bit about how automation yeah. plays into this. Uh, absolutely, once you made data delivery frictionless and you made data orchestration uh, and data automation frictionless, you do unlock new classes of applications. And what we're specifically seeing is that folks who traditionally run an array of uh, databases on very dedicated proprietary hardware and then again they get the data trapped in those, in those silos and they have a real hard uh, time to extract the value of that data. We see a lot of database farms coming on our unified platform across the data center basically being able to really extract the value of the data across a range of applications. Now we've been in the last few years investing pretty heavily in, in, uh, in storage area networks mm -hmm. and arrays and those types of resources. Mm -hmm. Flash is changing that, yes. but it sounds as though you guys mm -hmm. are actually making it easier to bring servers into the mix of this. Mm -hmm. What's the real direction you see? Where, where's where's mm -hmm. this resource going to be managed by and, and what's the opportunity? So ultimately the resource should be uh, managed by the applications. It should be driven by the applications and managed uh, by machine learning, right? So as we understand the requirements of the applications, every individual application, it should be managed by machine learning in terms of the physical resources on the servers, the server capabilities you put underneath it, and then obviously start rolling um, the, the server hardware as, as sort of technology actually improves as well over time. So it's really being driven by the server, that's where the, that's where the, the market opportunity is coming from. That's right, yes. So the last question I have here is when we think about uh, new technology, mm -hmm. new classes of automation, mm -hmm. new trends in the mm -hmm. industry, uh, people always immediately go, yeah, but new companies? <laughs> Uh, where does Deterra mm -hmm. fit in its life cycle as it works with customers and as it delivers mm -hmm. value out? Yeah, if you look at the market today, um, uh, server-based storage is already larger than traditional array-based storage. Uh, it's growing at 5x uh, year by year. Um, since we've been on, on the cube the last time, about two years ago, we are now looking at a 240% CAGR um, every year. So um, the market has clearly come our way. This, this, is, this is the time for this kind of product. So the market's good. Company's good, mm -hmm. trends are good. Yes. Uh, as we think ultimately about where this ends up in a few years, what role will Deterra play mm -hmm. within kind of the evolved computing industry? What do you see from yeah. that? Yeah, given that we have the you know broad data orchestration, enterprise performance, and, and choice on hardware, we really do see ourselves as the data foundation for the software defined data center. And what I mean by that, again, just in an operational model, we are to data what Kubernetes is to compute across a number of operating environments. So it's a really broad data foundation for, uh, for everyone who wants to deliver uh, IT as a service. So, Guy, I have a, a very simple question for you, very complex answer. One of the places where this seems to be especially important, or the need is especially great, is in that world of analytics. Yeah. Uh, especially as we try to close the loop between the analytical systems and the operating systems, uh, the operational systems. Uh, how does Deterra and analytics come together? Not just in the use of analytics to make Deterra better, but 
Deterra in making analytics applications run better? Yeah, that's a, and as you said, an easy question, complicated answer. Um, in reality, what companies are trying to do is to run their analytics at the speed of which they're competing in their market space, which means that it has to get a lot faster. And today's classic environment is an ETL with a, a data lake, so parking stale data and analyzing it post-event. And uh, tomorrow in, in environment and where people are using AI and ML is now in stream and it's uh, in real time. And so part of that is you actually have very, very fast applications, uh, both from a performance perspective, but also how long their life cycle is. You know, because people are doing A-B testing on the web, uh, they're doing analytics on the fly, and it really is um, a, a kind of a different world. It's a different pace. I mean, when I started this business or when I was in business early and I had hair, you know, we used to look at organizations that had applications that were lasting 10 or 20 years. And now we're looking at enterprise applications that are up and down um, within a period of months, if not weeks. And so managing that life cycle and not having to invest in infrastructure to support something, that age old adage of, you know, you don't buy an application if it's in 1.0 has gone. Because by the time you're into 1.1, that opportunity's disappeared as well. And so part of what I saw in the attraction with Datera is because it's absolutely uh, software defined and all the resilience handles in the software, not the hardware, there's not the infrastructure burden and it has much more agility to get up. It can provide uh, tier zero, tier one. So again, you land and expand. So in test and dev, you have the same environment and by a matter of flipping a few switches, you now can have uh, tier one illities and then you can drop down in that life cycle. And then it doesn't matter whether it's on premise, whether it's a distributed environment or on cloud, it's the same infrastructure, same architecture. So back to what uh, Mark said, you have data freedom. So we're trying to tie the physical realities of data to the virtual realities of physical, mm -hmm. of, of machine resources in IT to the cloud realities of the new wave of applications. That's exactly right. Mark Fleischman, CEO and co-founder of doTERRA. Uh, Guy Churchwold, Executive Chairman of Deterra, thanks very much for being on theCUBE. Thanks for having Thank us, you, Peter. Peter. And once again, this is Peter Burris, Wikibon, thanks for watching theCUBE.